Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of the Fitness Business Growth Podcast. Today, we're talking pricing. It can make or break your business. Cue the intro. Welcome to the Fitness Business Growth Podcast, a podcast run by gym owners for gym owners. My name is Mitch, and along with Jamie, we are your hosts, and we will be discussing all the important things that you need to run a successful fitness business. From marketing, to lead generation, to sales, to retention, to staff, and much, much more. So if you are a fitness business owner, then this is for you. We hope you enjoy the following episode, and we will speak with you soon. And here we are, mate. We're back. That's there it is. First uh, intro of 2023. I'm sure all the gym owners listening to this podcast are very busy, as even we are at the moment with the gym. It's just doing a lot of planning for the new year coming up. But I hope everyone had a lovely Christmas and new year. But, mate, I'm going to throw it straight over to you. We're not mucking around. Something you're very, very, very passionate about, pricing. Yeah, I thought it would be a nice discussion point today. Uh, a lot of, I guess there's a lot of vanity metrics when you talk with other gym owners and just the more groups you're in and the more sort of people you talk about it with, how many members you got, uh, how many clients do you have? And if you've got 200 clients paying $40 a week, it's the same or worse than having 100 clients paying $80 a week. So it's sort of just something that it's always grinded my gears a little bit when people talk about number of clients when not really referring to, I guess, the price of those clients. And that's what I want to discuss today. And a few key points about why pricing is important and, and what's changed things for us. And the reason why we're discussing pricing at this time of year is because it's a good time to actually increase your prices if you are considering it. And I think when Mitch goes through his reasons, by the end of the episode, we hope that you do because it's super important. And I guess like far too often that we found we've, we've got clients in our program right now and they kind of make the decision based off their own wallet. They make the decision based off what they would be willing to spend. And quite often, I remember like it was yesterday, mate, you're working at Fit and Fast in Newcastle 2012 and you're a membership consultant, the good old days, throwing tennis balls at people. And there was a personal trainer there and he used to charge 60 bucks an hour, whatever whatever it was. And I remember you said to me, who who would pay $60 for personal training? And yeah. that is, <laughs> considering what we do now for a living, like how dare you? Well, yeah, I know. Who, who the hell did I think I was? But at, at that at that point, I, I didn't have the belief that personal training was – something that could help people. I never had a personal trainer. I didn't see the need for one at that point in my life. But it, it, it does tie in with one of the points here today, which we'll start with, which was not letting your own beliefs dictate your price. And and we, we know other gym owners, other personal trainers who have that same belief that I had back, you know, when I first entered the industry, when you think, oh, I wouldn't pay $70 a week or I wouldn't pay $70 a session or, you know, whatever that number is. Therefore, they don't think it's right to charge their members that. And it kind of ties in with one of the other key points here is where just because it's not something you believe you should be charging, it doesn't mean that your business doesn't need to charge that to keep the doors open and run a viable and successful business. And, that's where just because you think something doesn't mean that it's for the greater good of your business, even if you feel like it's given everyone a great deal because it's cheaper than what other people are charging. Yeah, I hear so many excuses around pricing. Oh, it's, it's, it's nice if you guys say that because you're in Newcastle, New South Wales. Like I can't charge that in X rural town. Pricing is the same anywhere you go. There is obviously the exception to the rule. I'm talking the middle of Bondi, the middle of Sydney CBD, the middle of South Bank in Melbourne. But for the majority of Australia, you can charge what you feel as though that your service is worth. And if you don't want to charge that much, deep down inside, you probably believe that your service isn't actually worth it. Yeah, and Newcastle is pretty rural. 
Like it, we, we aren't a big city. Obviously, anyone who knows the area knows it's getting bigger and uh, it's not the, you know, the coal mining town that it, that it once was, but it, it's still it's still not Sydney or Melbourne or even the Gold Coast or Brisbane or, or anything like that. So we're, we're certainly not, uh, you know, in the middle of the CBD or Bondi or South Bank or, or the Gold Coast or anything like that. So our pricing... Like, like Jamie mentioned, it's it, it, there are there are obviously some parameters around where you are and what you can charge, but it it's, shouldn't be a limitation for most people listening. Um, and, and I think the the most important thing that that people need to do is you need to actually do the maths on what you're charging and how many members you need for that to be successful after you minus your rent and your staffing and your equipment and your electricity and everything else that comes with it. Because if you're needing 200 members at $40 a pop for you to earn the money you want and you've only ever had 100 members, like you you have a pricing problem because Mm. you're not about to magically get another 100 members and be able to sustain it. So... Let's do let's do the quick math, man, if you don't mind. So let's just say the average gym owner is paying a thousand dollars rent, and they're paying paying so we're one staff. Weekly here. We're talking weekly. Yeah, thousand yeah, dollars a week rent, and their staff member is a thousand dollars. They got one staff member, thousand staff, thousand rent. Your expenses are two k, inclusive of everything, right? And then your goal is to make two thousand dollars as the owner. So you need to make four thousand dollars a week. Now, the interesting thing here, mate, and this stood out to me recently, so 4,000 4, 4, divided by 20, you need 200 members. 4,000 divided by 30, you need 133 members. 4,000 divided by 50. All right, I messed it up. Sorry, mate. Where's my math going? 4,000 4, divided by 50 is 80 members, by like $50 80 members. a week. Yep. And then 4,000 divided by, let's get silly now, divided by 100 is 40 members. And this is what really, really stood out to me. What if you were charging $200 for a really small semi-private training? You need 20 members. So the question I'll throw back to you, Mitch, is like imagine having to manage 200 members when you've only got 100 and you're not getting the next 100 or having 20 people. What type of business that would mean for you in terms of the sessions that you run, the equipment that you need, the staffing that you have, the admin and everything else that goes along with having more members. Biggie said it: "No money, no problems. No members, no problems." It's and so it's, true. It, it, like, it is true, and and obviously that's an extreme example. Having you know some people paying two hundred dollars a week, there, there would be gyms out there that, that do have it, uh, personal train, personal training or semi private. But the the point is something that we found out many years ago. We haven't all, we've documented this before, but we haven't always charged what we do now. We've always charged more than what a 24-7 gym is. But we found even when we were charging $25 or $30 a week for boot camp back in the day, the members were as expecting of what we were needing to provide as they are now when we charge $65 to $75 a week. And they they expect more than a 24-7 facility, which is totally fair enough. But the difference between 30 and 70 for the member, they still want a good service. They still want good sessions. They still want good staff. They still want you to to provide fun workouts, social events, all the things that it means to be be a be a good gym and a good facility. But one of them's half the price, and the other's double. So mm. I think a lot of owners get get caught up in providing, I guess, something that is cheaper or more affordable than other gyms in town. I know our prices specifically are, are more in line with like your F45s and your air lockers and, and your BFTs. But there are a lot of owners out there who are trying to undercut them. They're charging $20 or $30 a week less in the hope that that's going to steal away, you know, their members because that that's a ripoff. I can provide the, a better program for half the price. And you're just burying yourself a hole. Just a, just a bit of a public service announcement, mate. We learned this the hard way back in 2015. We thought if we priced our membership low enough, i.e. $30 a week, that if people weren't coming, they would still keep their membership like a 24-hour gym. And let me tell you, we were wrong. 
If you run a yeah. small local gym and you, the owner, have a direct line to that member, either through text, phone, Facebook message or email, that person will cancel their membership if they're not getting value, whether they're paying 20 30 40 or 50 unlike when they have to actually walk into a 24-hour gym and sign a cancellation form the majority of boutique gyms will just allow cancellation via that communication and they will come in thick hard and fast so do not base your pricing off if people aren't using it i hope they don't mind paying me because people cancel netflix yeah that's a really great point and and i think back when we were in the big box game back in the early 2010s there was no Facebook, you know, people weren't texting. It was all done via email and phone call to like the, the, the club itself. So if people wanted to cancel, they literally emailed or called and then they had to come in and do it. Ten years on, that's just not viable anymore. People just aren't expected to do that because the game, the, all the technology has changed around how it is you communicate. So that in itself you know, ha has changed. You, no matter what you price it, you aren't going to have sleepers. So you, you, you may as well, you may as well be at the, be at the upper end price wise, as opposed to something that's more quote unquote reasonable, because you are still going to have people that that need to cancel for financial reasons, whether that's thirty dollars a week, forty dollars a week, sixty dollars a week, eighty dollars a week. We found that a lot of the time that gets viewed in the same boat. It's it's that additional cost in their budget that they can give up. As much as we love to think it's you know such an important part of their life, and it is, when the you know when the going gets tough financially, they're going to look at things they can cull, and regardless of that price, they're, they're going to look at that. So you may as well be at the upper end of it. Well, I think I think we're happy to share our prices for our gym, mate. We like transparency with our members, as we are we still own two gyms ourselves, so we have contracts. <laughs> That's another episode, uh, but we charge sixty six for twelve months. We charge seventy five for six months. That was 2022 pricing. And we made a decision at the start of the year that our new 12 month rate is going to be 69. Our six month rate is going to be 89. So it's about a 5% increase, mate. Is that right? Uh, 79 for six months. 69 for, for six months. months. Yeah. yeah. And that, that prices us as the second most expensive gym in Newcastle. Something I'm really proud of. One of our first ever, would you call, would you call Paul a mentor from any time? He's a mentor, yeah, right? He was. Yeah. Yeah. He opened a pizza shop and he said, Jamie, Mitch, never open up a pizza shop. It's just a race to the bottom. And this was before like Domino's and Pizza Hut and I think it was Eagle Boys. Eagle Boys done him in. It was existed. Yeah, it he was Eagle Boys. Yeah, he yeah. owned a local curry curry. He owned a local pizza shop in Curry Curry. And he was the cream of the cream. We're talking thirty dollar gourmet pizzas. Eagle Boys came in and wiped him out. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I think the reason he was telling us that was because when we were working for him at any time, there was a new iGym that came into town that were charging a few dollars less a week than him. And right. he just didn't want to bar of the price game because it just became a race to the, race to the bottom, like, like he said. And we still use that, that, uh, that um, quote today. Very, yeah. He was a good mentor, Paul. Yeah. But and it should be you should be having a race to the top. Like how quickly can you get your prices from where they are now to where you want to be, which is hopefully the, hopefully the upper echelon. And one other thing too, mate, like your pricing dictates literally what type of gym you're going to be, what type of owner you're going to be, and what type of touch points is that member going to get. So if you are in this industry to help people, you understand accountability is probably the number one thing that we offer. That requires three, four, five touch points a week. If you start bringing in staff and they're fulfilling that service of keeping members accountable, your margins are so compressed that you will make no money. And when you make no money, your gym closes and then you don't help anyone. Yeah. It ties in with what type of program you need to run to. This is something we've spoke about a lot where if you've got 250, 300 members in a one facility in one facility, then, you know, most places will have eight-ish sessions a day, give or take. You're going to have 20 to 30 people at every session. So then you, you start looking at needing two trainers for every session, which drives up your staffing cost. It drives up your need for a big facility. It drives up your need for lots of equipment. It, it drives up the type of coaching and training you can actually deliver because how well can you actually run a session when there's 28 people there. 
So we we made the decision to to increase our price and, and continue to have done so over the last you know five six years, and our session numbers have gotten lower. When we were initially running our very first bootcamp, we had over five hundred members, but they were paying five hundred uh, twenty to twenty five to thirty dollars a week. We still were making good money, and it was a you know we, we made a lot of mistakes, but it was turning some good profit. But good our, money, our session. Our session, our session numbers were out of control. Like I, I remember there was times there was 35 people in a session, members start to get fed up. So the, the whole thing is that, like Jamie said, it, it really does dictate everything that you do with the what you charge. And it also dictates what type of person you bring in. If, if you're charging $30 a week for unlimited group fitness compared to if you're charging $80 for a six-month membership, like it doesn't take Albert Einstein or someone a lot smarter than us to realize what type of person you're going to get in with those two different facilities. I remember that exact moment made in Curry Curry. We had we were running session upstairs and downstairs. We were running sessions downstairs in an area where we didn't have a DA. I think we had like 60 people in the building. It was like day one of one of the first 21 day challenges. This is six years ago pre before anyone else was doing them. We had like 60 people leaving and we had 50 people coming which is like 110 car parks. And our DA was good for four of them. And there was this guy, I'll never forget him, Damo, bald guy, not the friendliest bloke in the world. And he's out the front just, oh, just he couldn't believe it. <laughs> Neither could we. Yeah. Yeah, there was literally like 60 people exiting and 50 people arriving, leaving the four o'clock session, arriving for the five. Yeah. And when we, it, when we first discovered we had this problem was a member walked in and said, wow, this is like speed dating. Yeah, it was. So well, we, share, we share these lessons because we've learned them the hard way. Yeah, and, and it's all well and good for your social media to have that session photo where there's 40 people against the wall and everyone's sweaty and whatever. And we have some of those old photos with the stupid amount of people at sessions. But in reality, the, the more people you have, the harder it is to, to manage, manage your gym, manage your facility, but also just the need for more staff, more resources, more space. Like space is a huge one. We, we, we hear of people that start to get an influx in membership and then they want to double their facility and double their rent for five years but just because they've got a good result in their last 21-day challenge and put on 10 members. And then they go and, you know, they, they buy four new squat racks and get four new Concept 2 rowers because the wad needs to have rowers in them. Well, like you still always make a joke about like just we're, we're happy with the strength of our current members because if you had 30 blokes in a session, you were doing a 28-day bust the gut challenge, day one, they're all in there trying to deadlift 3RM, how many weights do you need? Yeah, like, and you need a what for that one session, or that first week of your challenge. Anyway, it, it's it's one of those things where more isn't always better. And we're very much of the opinion now that less people paying more money is much preferred for, for our current uh, current business landscape and, and the structure that we have. It's very manageable. It's not something that everyone can afford, which I think is really important. You know, a lot of people throw around the word affordable. We've got a local gym here in Newcastle, which was Planet Fitness. And then they end up we're going to get sued because they weren't a, an official Planet Fitness um, franchise and now they're Earth Fitness, and they yeah. promote that their you know fitness should be affordable and it's five dollars a week. That is very affordable, but <laughs> anything more than that, it, it's not affordable. And, and that's where for us, we we quite often have people who inquire and we're just flat out too expensive. It doesn't matter how good the salespeople we are, you know, they they're literally just not good fits for the program, and and that's okay. We, we don't need to have every single person who inquires seem like that it's a good deal and it is affordable because it's not. And it comes back to the quality of client that you want and price is the quickest way to get rid of more people who you don't want in your facility and more people that you do want. Yeah, let's have a look in regards. Let's just do some quick math, mate. I love some quick math. Let's say that you have 10 leads, right? And we charge 60 and the gym charger down the road charges 30. Now, we both get six paid trials to join. We'd get more of them because we're better. But let's say we both get six and then four of those members join each. We had four members join at 60. The other gym had four members join at 30. 30. We got twice. It's like us having eight new members. 
except we, we don't go to fulfill, fulfill with the more barbells. Or there you go the other way and it's like we only need two members to their four. Yeah, even better. Like, yeah. So, and and it, it, I, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that the cost per impression, so the cost to reach 1,000 people on Facebook has gone up every year for, <laughs> for 10 years. It's going to continue to increase. So as your cost per acquisition, your cost to acquire a client goes up, should be charging more because that all drops into the lifetime customer value, which all drops into your bottom line. What about the I word? What about inflation? The, oh, the I word. It's like what? That's what, something that people don't consider. That like, of course, gym membership should be getting more expensive. Everything has in the last year, eight yeah. percent. Do you know what? You know, do you know what? No one mentions inflation, mate, because it's really sad. And it's, it's tough inflation, to get head around. Yeah. But and it's. If, if 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 inflation if the if inflation goes up by nine percent, your cost of living, your staff cost of living goes up by nine percent, and your gym is making the same amount of money it is in twelve months' time, you're making nine percent less because of the cost of living. So therefore, if your gym isn't growing by nine percent every year, you're actually going backwards. And if you put that into a spreadsheet and did your projections over a five year period, it would scare the living hell out of you. And we're not fear mongering. But that is just the reality. It is the reality. And, and I see, I've seen some people on Instagram, some trainers go the other way where they say, I'm cutting the costs of my program because I want it to be more affordable because everything's getting so expensive. So you're copping the, you're copping the 9% inflation that you're not addressing, and then you might be reducing your cost by 10%. You're 19% worse off. Mm. And more, so and more, just, and more importantly, mate, the gym's net margin is probably 20%. Exactly. And that's where and that's where it goes. Yeah. One more thing about pricing that I want to really cover. It's really, really important. People don't understand. We're like, let's just say that back to math again. Let's say that you make ten thousand dollars a week in your gym and your net mark and you have a hundred members paying a hundred bucks. That's right, ten thousand yeah. dollars. And your net margin is twenty percent. That means you as the gym owner make two thousand dollars a week. Now, if you increase your prices to a hundred and ten. Right now, you're making eleven thousand, and you might think that's not much, Jeremy. That's only one thousand dollars. You've just increased your profit by thirty three percent because the gym is now making eleven thousand, and you're taking out three. Does does that make sense, Mitch? Does... You've increased it by fifty percent because you've gone from two thousand to three thousand. Yeah, so providing you... all your costs stay the same. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which they will. And if you add more sessions, or buy more equipment, or add more services, or get more rent. Everything, but if you if you just literally double your price tomorrow, you would make a lot more money. Well, yeah, I think we should cover one more thing, mate. Is we uh, drastically increased our prices two years ago after COVID, like drastically. We're talking 10, 15 bucks a week on every single member, and of course we had fears. What if they cancel? Mitch, do you want to run you run through like the process you did and developed leading up to that moment when we did increase their prices? Because from memory, I believe we had one member cancel. Yeah, I can't remember the exacts to it. We on top of that, we were actually changing location where we were moving about ten minutes away. So there was a number of people who just um, couldn't make it geographically. And I can't remember if there was one or two, or, but there wasn't many. But we we increased. We were a boot camp and we moved into a location. We went from about $30 a week to about $50 a week on average. Some people went from like $25 a week to $50. And we prepared for the worst and, and it was after COVID and there was a lot of worry in the world. And we only had a handful of people cancel. And that was with a change in location and you know, quite inconvenient for some. Uh, but I, I, th I think anyone who's actually listening to this, the, the thought of increasing prices in your current members can be scary. And, and it's something even for us, we've we've definitely wrestled with the idea because of especially our longer term members who have supported us the last three years through, you know, the lockdowns and everything. But one, the, the, the lowest hanging and easiest thing for you to do is increase prices for new members. They, do, they don't know what you charged yesterday or last year or the year before so you can effectively if you're charging people fifty dollars a week you could charge a new member seventy dollars a week and then none the wiser and that that really is something that they can implement straight away like you don't need to change 
anything. You just start quoting $70 a week instead of 50. Obviously, you need to process around that. But for, for new members, I think that's a, a really great starting point for gym owners to, to start to bump up costs because I don't doubt that all of your costs have gone up in the last year, you know, all the way through to what your rent is. That That's obviously like a steady increase. Cost of equipment's gone up, cost of supplies, cost of your insurance. Hopefully, if you've got staff, you, you're paying them more, you know, a couple percent more each year. But for the love of God, every new member, you need, you need to bump up your prices and you can readjust that as a starting yeah. point. And one other thing, let's just say that you currently charge 35 a week and you bump your prices to 70. I know it sounds unbelievable right now. If you get three cancellations of your old members and get two new ones, your direct debit's better off $35 a week and you have less members. More room, yeah. more room in your sessions for new members. Lots of maths today, and, and I want to finish this up with something that, that's not math-related, but I think that all the numbers are very important because when you actually break it down, you realise that most people are needing to bump up their prices. When you start to take out GST and processing fees and people on freeze and people in arrears, like your 100 members paying 50 is in 5,000. It's probably more like 85% of that, 52 uh, what did I say? Yeah, 52, 42.50. But the last thing I want to leave you with, when you're looking at price, both of us came from personal training backgrounds, d- despite the story earlier about me effectively laughing at what the, the old trainer used to charge. We were personal trainers, one-on-one trainers, before we went into group training. And back in 2014, we were charging $60 a week. We were living overseas in Canada charging $75, sorry, $6 a session, I meant. We were living in Canada in 2012 and charging $75 a session. And what was minimum so, wage there? 10 dollars $10 an hour. And now we're running group training, albeit not one-on-one, but you get unlimited access. You can come five, six times a week. Most people come about three. So if you're, if you're going to look at me and say that $75 a week for three sessions each week with a good program and a good gym with you know six people in it and a good trainer isn't worth it, then you you should get out of the industry. So, again, it it comes back to what you believe a good price is and what's affordable and what you would pay. And I think you need to leave those those thoughts out of it because, obviously, I would love to charge people 10 bucks a week and and come in and I could have anyone and everyone in there, but the fact of it is that's not going to pay the bills and, and allow us to run a good business. And at the end of the day, they're not actually paying for the sessions or, or the classes. They're paying for a result. They're, they're paying to lose weight. They're paying, they're paying to live a healthier life, to be part of a community. And all of those things, you can't really put a dollar sign on it. So you shouldn't be trying to compare your price with other gyms in town because likelihood is the other gyms in town have based their prices off nothing as well. And that's probably why they're going to go out of business and they're going to be broke in the next few years. And if you think when you drop your price, you're going to get that... <gasps> It's too expensive. That person already knows that they can go to Planet Fitness for five dollars. Whether you charge 30, 40, 50, or 60, you still might get the gasp. So go for the biggest gasp possible. Yeah. Have a look at your price. We'll, we'll leave it here. It's been about half an hour. Have a look at your pricing. Do some maths. We've done a lot of it here already, but do some of your own maths and really determine what it is you need to charge. Don't be afraid to increase prices for new members. If you get a new inquiry tomorrow, they have no idea what you've charged before. So you can effectively have a clean slate and start a new pricing structure from tomorrow. Awesome, guys. As always, thank you for listening. We really, really appreciate your attention. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the night.